Have you ever made a huge commitment to say, I'm going to bang out the phones, I'm going to make tons of dials, and then you do it, and then it leads to absolutely nothing. So you end up just quitting and you stop doing it and you say, geez, I gotta find a better way to generate meetings. This is a really common scenario that I see over and over again, where as a result of using the phone incorrectly, it leads to literally zero outcomes. So in this video, I'm going to show you 13 phone sales tips to land the meeting. Check it out. Number one, warm up your calls. There are so many people out there who are saying, geez, I'm making cold calls and it's not working. Well, stop making them cold. <laughs> You have so many tools now that can make your calls warm that you might as well make them warm. So that means leveraging LinkedIn connection requests to warm up the interaction, to send them a couple of cold emails to start to warm up that connection, and then using the phone as a way to follow up on your outreaches. Even sending a letter by the US mail is going to allow you to be much more effective when you actually get them on the phone, because if they actually got that letter, they're gonna be like, oh yeah, I saw your letter. The fact that you're warming up your calls is going to make them so much more effective. Number two, personalize every call. Now this is something that I think very few reps actually do well. I think the idea of a script often means that we are using the same exact script on every single prospect. But with some very basic research and leveraging, let's say, LinkedIn Navigator, you can personalize your calls in a way that's going to get the prospect to say, wow, this person really knows who I am. If you're making a call to a chief sales officer of a Fortune 500 company, it's really easy to find out how many salespeople are in that organization and maybe what their sales were last quarter or what their revenues were last quarter. And if you can incorporate just those two data points into your call, suddenly, the prospect is like, wow, this person really knows more about my organization than most salespeople who call on me. Literally meaning that the 347 sales reps that have led to your last quarterly sales of $5,800,000, just that little bit is going to allow them to say, wow, this person really knows their stuff. So really personalize every call as much as you can without going too over the top. Number three, drop the sales voice. This is a really, really big distinction that's so important for sales reps to do. Chances are when you're making calls, and the way you can tell this is by recording your calls, record your calls. You can even just use your iPhone or your, your phone to not record the prospect's voice, which can be illegal in some states, but just recording your own voice on your phone, what you're going to find is chances are you're using the sales voice, which sounds like this. This is my normal voice, this is my sales voice. Hey George, how are you today? So good to hear from you. Oh, I'm so glad to connect with you. It's that higher octave, and what that means is that's sending a signal to the prospect that this is a sales call, and they're immediately going to want to run away from you because you're using the sales voice and you're tilting your hat immediately that you're a salesperson. Number four, have your script. You know, people always come up to me and say, you know, I don't like to use a script because it makes me feel scripted. The reason that you feel scripted from your script is because you're crappy at using your script. Every good salesperson should have a script when they're making a prospecting call, period. You must have a script, even if it's just a basic structure, but ideally you have that script. What you have to do though is practice your script enough time so that way you can basically just do it with your eyes shut. That's where it starts to sound good. You know, if you said to actors, we're not gonna have any kind of script because we don't wanna sound scripted. You say that to a great actor, they're like, whoa, well then what am I gonna say? The reason I'm a great actor is because I can use a script and make it sound good. That's the whole point of having a script. What we don't wanna do is not have a script and then meander all over the place and kind of say whatever comes to our head because that's going to sound terrible. Number five, know your contingencies. Now a contingency is basically a little way to overcome many objections that you get in prospecting calls. Most objections that you're going to get in your prospecting calls are very predictable. And so a contingency is just a way to overcome that that is basically responding to a likely response from that prospect. So a contingency 
might be needed when you know you first get on the phone and they're like, oh, you know, I don't have any time. Can you try me later? Now, most of those people say, oh, okay, well, when would be a good time to call you? That's lame. That's basically just going and just acquiescing with whatever the prospect says. A great contingency might sound something like, well, you know what, George? It sounds totally fair. Would it be okay if I took 30 seconds, told you why I called if after? Doesn't make sense. We could hang up. Fair? And they're like, okay, fine. That's a contingency because what it's done is it's kept the call going and it's allowed that conversation to just go a little bit further than what might have happened in other scenarios. Number six, expect resistance. You're making dials to people who don't know you. So chances are they're going to be pretty resistant in a lot of situations. That's okay. Don't be afraid of it. Don't be terrified of resistance. Instead, just expect it. It's not a big deal. Great salespeople, great dialers, expect that resistance. They have the contingencies scripted out. So that way, you know, there's basically nothing that can happen that's gonna throw them off so much. Even if your prospect gets a little bit cranky, that's okay. If you expect some resistance, you're going to be prepared for it. Now, don't be fearful of the resistance. Sometimes prospects are really easy and friendly when you get them on the phone. But most of the time, they're going to push back and they're going to resist because you're getting them to do something that they don't necessarily want to do, right? They have other things to do than talk to a salesperson. So if you expect that resistance, you're going to be much more effective in your prospecting calls. Number seven, bring some value. I hear so many sales calls that sound something like, I'd love to learn more about your business or I'd love to show you some ways that we can help your organization be more effective. But they don't really demonstrate any value up front. And so what we want to do in our prospecting calls is bring some value, bring some insight, show that you know what the hell you're talking about. Show that you know what's going on in the industry. Show that you have some insight into what their competitors are facing or what they might be facing. That's how we bring value in these prospecting calls. Simply by just saying, oh, you know, I'd love to, you know, set up a meeting to learn more about your business or whatever. It's like, they don't want to do that. You need to show value immediately. Number eight, have a kick-ass CTA. And a kick-ass CTA is a kick-ass call to action. You want to have a call to action that is better than just let's schedule a meeting. Because if your call to action is just to schedule a meeting, chances are your prospect is going to be pretty resistant to the idea of that because you haven't generated much value. So having a call to action that isn't just scheduling a meeting, but is, is think of it almost as like a carrot, right? You wanna have a carrot that's going to lure the prospect towards you. And so a great call to action might be doing something that is offering real value, like offering some kind of an audit or a report or an assessment for them, or maybe some case studies or something that is really going going to be better than just, hey, can we hop on a call and let me pick your brain. Even just demonstrating something like, you know, I'd love to share some best practices of what we're seeing in the industry. Even that is going to get the prospect to say, if they have those challenges, they're gonna be like, oh, okay, yeah, sure, I'd like to actually hear some best practices. That's what a kick-ass call to action is all about. Number nine, make a recommendation. You want to make recommendations, assuming you have had a successful call so far. This is toward the end of the call when you're going to be trying to schedule a meeting, you want to put yourself in that situation where now you are the consultant, you are the expert, and so you are starting to make recommendations about next steps. And so it would sound something like this, George, can I make a recommendation? And they'll say, sure. You say, why don't I have my team put together a, an assessment as we discussed of what your sales team is doing right now, and in the meantime, we can schedule a call for the near future where I can share what we've discovered in that assessment. Does that make sense? And they'll be like, okay, sure. And so now because you've put it in the framing of a recommendation and they've agreed to it, now they're much more likely to actually show up for that meeting and commit to that meeting. And so we always want to be in a place when our prospecting calls, we are making a recommendation for a next step. Number 10, Get the calendar invite. So this is just the next part of that conversation, which is that we always want to have a calendar invite go out on any scheduled appointment. 
invite. For some of us, we're already doing this, great. But if you're not doing this, you must use calendar invites to make sure that your prospect is going to actually show up to that meeting and that you get in their calendar. So what you want to do is on the call, once they've agreed to the meeting, you say, okay, great. And you figure out a time and you say, okay, so what I'm going to do is right now, I'm gonna send you a calendar invite for that meeting. Just while I have you on the phone, I just wanna make sure that that goes through and actually get them to accept the calendar invite while you're on the call if possible. And so now you have a much more solid next step. It's a super powerful way to do it. And you know, it's usually really easy to do. Plus you're gonna need their email. It's very simple, have it ready to go, get the calendar invite out, get in their calendar, and that next step is going to be much stronger. Number 11, be very assertive. In most phases of selling, being too assertive can be problematic. But when it comes to prospecting calls, you do actually need to be more assertive than in most phases of selling. Because you really are dealing with a, a, a bucking bronco in a lot of cases, where the prospect, they're just trying to weasel out of this conversation. And so you need to be super assertive in your prospecting calls in order to keep that call on track. Does that mean that every call is gonna go well? No, of course not. But you, a lot more calls will go well if you are assertive and you stick to your process. Number 12. You are a peer. This is a critical mindset that every top performing prospecting caller has to have. You are a peer to your prospect. You are not a doormat. You are not someone who is below your prospect, but you are at the same level. You are looking eye to eye with them. Even though you're talking through a phone or on Zoom or whatever it is, you are a peer. Don't put your prospects up on a pedestal like they're some amazing, magnificent, special human being. They are a peer. Talk to them like you know them. That doesn't mean that you're going to use things like dude and buddy. I hate that stuff but just talk to them like a normal human being. Talk to them like just someone else who also puts on their pants one leg at a time. You are a peer. Think of them as an equal. Number 13, this is the last tip and it's so important. SW cubed N, and that stands for some will, some won't, so what next? Let me repeat that. Some will, some won't, so what next? Prospecting calls are ultimately a numbers game. You're going to use strategies that are going to make you more effective on those calls, but ultimately it is a numbers game. You have to make a lot of dials. You have to do a lot of activity in order to generate appointments, in order to generate those meetings. And so if a call doesn't go as you wanted it to, if you get a prospect who's cranky and kind of mean, you've got to shake that stuff off. You've got to laugh off those, those big blow ups because at the end of the day, you can't control everything. So always remember SW cubed N, some will, some won't, so what next? That is what we must always think about. So there are the 13 phone sales tips to land the meeting. And if you enjoyed this video, then I have an awesome free training on the data-driven approach to closing more sales in today's marketplace. Just click right here to get registered instantly. Seriously, just click right here. This is an in-depth training that will help you close more sales at higher prices, all while generating more meetings. Also, if you got some value, please like this video below on YouTube and be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel by clicking my face. It should be right about here to get access to a new video just like this one each week.